In today's video, I'm showing off how to use callables within Godot using C++ scripting. And the way we get C++ scripting is by using an extension called Project Genova. And my example here is this is a voxel engine I've been working on. And if you see, we have all these cubes rendering and each of these are made up of chunks. So this is one chunk, this being another chunk. If we look down here, each chunk will check the chunk above it. And if there's a chunk above it, it'll say has a chunk above it. Otherwise it says it fails. So I'm gonna show you how this works. Okay, so inside our code, this is our chunk.cpp file, and we have this void generate mesh function, which in our world, our world spawns in a two or a five by three by three grid of chunks. And once they're all spawned in, it will call this generate mesh. So in here, we do call this function get neighbor chunk which is of the type callable. And we pass this in as a Genova property. So we have this callable, it's a good neighbor chunk, and we just pass in the default constructor. And the way we set this function is, we could set it in our main file. Like if we go back to Godot, we could set it as a spawn property. So if we went to our chunk, we could set the callable to something. However, since we spawn these chunks in dynamically, we want to also set this dynamically through the code. So in our world file, we go over here and we create a callable, we'll call it function, and we pass in this node, as in this is the node that the function's on, and we have the function find chunk. So this is what we're actually calling when we check if there's a chunk above this chunk. So what we do is we pass in this find chunk, which it will try to find a chunk at position if it throws an exception, meaning it's not there, it will return null pointer. Otherwise, it will return the node pointer at that location in our unordered map. And we pass in, we set get neighbor chunk equal to this function, and then we pass that into every chunk. So then in our main code, or in our generate mesh code in our chunk, we'll check if get neighbor chunk is valid. And then for each of the six directions, we set this node pointer which is defined at the top here, equal to object cast to node, and then that callable we defined, a dot call, and then we call it using this chunk position plus one in whatever direction. And the reason we have to cast it to a node so it can become a node pointer is because we can only pass it in as a variant, which is like Godot's dynamic type that can become any variable. So we return it as a variant, then we cast it back to a node. And then if all that works, if something goes wrong here, we'll error. Otherwise, if that works, we'll check if C got dit neighbor pause y is not null pointer. So if there is no chunk, then it'll return null pointer and we'll go here. But if there is one, we'll output this chunk has a chunk above it and we pass in the three positions of this chunk. Otherwise, we say this chunk fails. So this code allows us because we spawn in all these chunks dynamically it allows us to have one chunk reference the world, which is the parent, and then have the parent reference another chunk and pass it back. So right now it doesn't have much of a use besides outputting in the code, but there may be uses for this in the future. Like I could use this for spawning in new chunks or making doing chunk placing structures between chunks if I need to place a block in another chunk. This would be a use for it or dynamically generating meshes so I don't have to generate mesh faces covered by another chunk. And if you want to see more for the, from this project, you should click on this video here where I talk about generating collisions for each block within a chunk. And until next time, see ya.